Hey everyone, it's Brad from DevOps Journey, and today I just wanted to show off Ansible and setting up some Raspberry Pi virtual machines. So on my Raspberry Pi, I actually have ESXi server installed. Uh, ESXi is a hypervisor which allows you to build up virtual machines. So I have a single Raspberry Pi running ESXi, and within that Raspberry Pi, I have three nodes. And these nodes are just Ubuntu machines, and if I hop into it through the ESXi browser, you can see that I can manage them locally here. And I could log in if I wanted to, but it would be much better if I managed them through Ansible. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to set up Ansible on my local machine, and then I'm going to make sure that Ansible can connect out to them, and then I'm going to start pushing configurations. So this video is going to have bookmarks, so if you're just interested in a specific section, go ahead and use the bookmarks, and I'm going to share my code at the end on GitHub. Go ahead and check the description below if you're interested in the code. But for everyone else that's just learning, then I suggest just following along in the video to get a good understanding of on how you can use Ansible to set up machines on your end. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head on over to my GitHub and I'm actually just gonna copy some code that I've used before here. And this Ansible, my environment should work. So I'll just grab this and I'm gonna clone it to my local directory. And I'm just doing this because I never like redoing code if I don't have to. So this is a good baseline right here. So it's been cloned. I'm gonna hop into that directory. And now I'm gonna open up my code editor, which is Visual Studio Code. So we can see a couple things pop up. And if you're not familiar with Ansible, you can check out my course on Ansible. I have a playlist that I'll link to, but feel free just to watch. I'll try to explain things as I go. So this is a pretty simple structure for Ansible. We got variables, the inventory, and then we're gonna be using some roles. And then we have a playbook. I also have a readme that shows all my Ansible commands, which is very good since I haven't used Ansible in a few months. So I'm probably going to stumble around a little bit on this video, but we're going to get this going. We're going to communicate to our servers and uh, and start pushing out configurations to them. So let's go ahead and look at the inventories and you can see that I have a host and then it also is setting a user. So what I think I was doing here was I was just using Ansible locally on a Linux machine and I was pushing out Ansible configuration just locally. So we're gonna get a little more complex for our lab. We're actually gonna push out Ansible from a control machine out to three Linux nodes. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the variables here and I can take this out and I'll just say the Ansible user is gonna be Brad. And this is going to be whatever your Linux user is. It could be root, it could be pi, it could be what your name is. Basically, this is the user that has SSH access to your remote node. And then I'm going to change this to node one, node two, and node three. And I'll just copy this line and that should be enough. The next thing you need to test is you have name resolution. So being able to ping node one by name is gonna be something that you need to do. So let's go ahead and ping node one. And you can see I can ping node one, node two, and node three. So they're all online and I have name resolution. So in my inventory file, I can reference them by name instead of by IP address. Now, one thing about Ansible is you can't run it from Windows right now you have to run it from a Linux environment. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make use of Windows WSL to run a Linux environment within Windows. And this is a good way to do it if you're on a Windows environment. If you're following along on this video and you're using Linux, uh, that's even better. You won't need to do this step. So I have plenty of videos out there that I'll link to that shows you how to get a Linux environment on your Windows machine using WSL. But if you already have it set up, all you need to do is hop into that environment. So I will do that here and I will hop into my Ubuntu machine. And let me make this a little nicer to look at. All right, so that looks a little bit nicer. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm gonna test name resolution again. It should be working. If it's not working, then you can uh, go to EDC hosts, I believe, and you can edit your host file there, or you can go on your Windows workstation and change it from Windows. And that would just be under this path right here, C Windows System32 drivers, 
XC and you just hop in there and you can change it. Uh, you can see a couple things in here. I have my nodes and for some reason I don't want to go to Domino's dot com so i just set it in the post file to make sure that i can't get there anyways that's enough about me so i'm going to go ahead and clear the screen and now i'm going to go ahead and install ansible so it's very simple to do just do sudo app get install ansible and if that fails like it did for me that's because you didn't do a sudo app get update so let's do that and this is updating all our packages and repositories and once that's done, let's rerun the sudo apt get install Ansible. And now it looks like it's found it. So let's go ahead and hit yes. And now it's installing. Right, so Ansible is installed. So I will clear the screen. And the next step is to copy SSH keys. Now I'm not gonna do this right now because I already have SSH keys on this machine copied over to all my nodes. But if you're interested in seeing that, then check out my other video on it. I'll also have the commands in the readme. So since name resolution is working and SSH is set up, let's go ahead and test by running an ad hoc command. All right, so I'm gonna start it off with uh, Ansible and then I'm gonna reference my group. And the group is within that inventory host file and it's in, within these brackets. So my group is called lab. So I'll go Ansible lab. And then I need to reference my inventory file. So I'm going to go inventories slash host. And again, this folder and this file can be named whatever you want. You could name it Bobo the Circus Clown, as long as you're consistent and reference it in the command. But having it set as inventories and then hosts is a very good practice to do. So that's why I have it like that here. And then after that, I'm going to go dash M and then I'm going to say command. And this is telling Ansible that it is sending a command. And now I'm going to actually write my command. So I'll do dash A. And then I'm going to say uptime. So the command uptime is going to get sent to the lab group contained in the inventory file. So let's go ahead and run that. And I got an error. So let's have a look here. I had forgotten to put the dash I before my inventory file. So let's try this again. And now you can see we're getting a lot of output. I'm gonna go ahead and type yes. And it is actually having issues with SSH. So a good test to do before you get into Ansible is running SSH to those individual servers. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm just gonna go SSH rad at node three. So the server on node three is saying permission denied. It doesn't like my public key. So I know what the issue is here. I actually don't have my SSH keys on my WSL instance like I thought I did, but I can easily fix that right here. I have a command available. And basically this is copying my SSH keys from Windows over to the local Linux WSL instance. So let's run that copy. And now let's rerun our command. And now we're getting a different error. And this error is that Python is not installed on the remote machine. All right, so I did a little bit of troubleshooting and I think I figured it out. Uh, basically, this command module actually requires Python. I actually wanna use the module raw, which does not require Python. So we're gonna do it raw here. We're gonna change command to raw and we're gonna run it and we should see host names of all three nodes, which we do. We see node three, node one, and node two. And we can grab the uptime. Perfect, so it's able to get the uptime and you can see they all have relatively the same uptime as I brought them all online at the same time. Now let's go ahead and push out Python to these three nodes. As you've seen, Python is very important for running specific modules on Ansible. So we're really not gonna have full control of these machines until we have Python installed on them. So let's move forward and install Python. So I'm gonna rerun this command and instead of uptime, I'm gonna do a sudo app get dash y install python dash 
simple JSON. And it's very important to include this dash Y since we're not going to be on the workstation to hit yes when it prompts us. So dash Y is how you install a package in silent mode. So Ansible is going out to these workstations and pushing Python. This may take a minute or so as it has to go through the installation. So let's go ahead and wait to see if we get a success message. One eternity later. All right, so it hung there for me. And the reason it hung was because it is waiting for credentials. So to get over this, I'm going to actually add in the command become. And then I'm actually going to add dash dash ask dash become pass. And now it's asking me for a password. Put that in. And now everything should be working. And it did take a minute or so, but it did complete the installation. And I can see that all three are successful. So now if I rerun a command and I can take out this become. And instead of using raw, I can use the command module and run the command uptime. And this should work now. And it is not. Let's go ahead and troubleshoot this. It's probably that Python is not working on these nodes. So let's hop into the nodes. And you can see that the path for Python does not work. We type Python. Ubuntu is actually expecting it to be Python 3. So it doesn't have Python located in this directory. It's actually called Python 3. And if we go where Python 3, you can see that that command doesn't work. It's actually where is. So where is Python 3? And there's a couple of locations that it's installed on. Let's use this one. And you see when you run it, Python's working properly. So let's go ahead and make a change to Ansible. And we're going to say that for these machines, the Ansible Python interpreter is located here. And this is actually a variable. So I should specify a different section here. So I could go lab vars and this or if all my hosts were like this i could go like that i'll just say everything so all my hosts have the interpreter at this location so let's go ahead and rerun our command and now when we run it it goes out and we get the uptime from all three servers so I didn't need to install Python on them. Python was already installed. It's just that Python wasn't in the expected directory. Okay, so let's move forward. We've done a lot of troubleshooting, but we haven't got a lot of work done. But Ansible is set up. We're able to talk to our hosts, so it should be all downhill from here. All right, so now that Ansible is working and we're able to run commands remotely from our control workstation out to our servers, it's time to modify our playbook to start configuring our servers. So we're all done with the inventory file. Let's go ahead and have a look at the playbook. And it's a very simple playbook. I'm going to go over the lines here. So host is referencing your inventory file and it's saying the lab group. So basically all these servers will be in this playbook. Become means it's going to run as root and the roles it's going to install is common. And that's under here, this folder. We have a roles folder and then a common folder. So this is the actual meat and potatoes of our playbook will be under the common role. So we're going to have a look at that and modify it to install the packages that we want. The last thing here is some tags. You can set this line to be whatever you want, whatever makes sense for your environment. Basically, tags can be used to categorize your playbooks so you can run certain plays against certain things by using tags. So let's have a look at our role folder now. Underneath here, we have our role created. And this is the file structure for the common folder. If you want to learn how you can generate this folder structure on your own, there's a couple commands that you can do to do that. And I reference them in my other videos, so check those ones out. But if you're like me and you're just cloning from GitHub, that's fine as well. We'll just go in here and change what we need to. 
So let's go ahead and explore some of the files here. You can see there's a readme, there's a travis.yaml file. That's for if you're integrating CI, CD. But what we're interested in here is the tasks folder. So you can see I have three separate YAML files here. And it's always going to start with the main.yaml. And you can basically see that this main.yaml is just referencing these other two YAML files. So it's going to run the install underscore tools YAML and the environment YAML. So let's have a look at those YAML files. So this is the install tools YAML file. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to update the apt cache. It's running the apt module and it's saying update cache. This is your sudo apt update. And basically what this means is it's running sudo apt update. Now Ansible has all sorts of documentation out on their website. So if you're interested in the other options you can use for apt, go ahead and check it out. But it's relatively simple to pick up just by reading this configuration. You can see the next one down, it's going to install some common packages. So these are packages that I always have on my server. Basically, you can see it's run C, Python pip, Docker, a Python environment, and Docker compose. After that, I'm running the pip module, which will allow me to install the Docker Python package. And I actually don't really need to include this. I'm probably not going to make any Python scripts that interact with Docker, so I'm just going to take it out as it's not required. And then you can see this last one here is installing Minikube. Minikube is for running a single node Kubernetes cluster. It's really good for lab environments and learning Kubernetes, but I want to run a full Kubernetes cluster with three individual nodes on three different virtual machines. I want the full meal deal Kubernetes experience. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. After that, I'm going to go ahead and look at environment and basically it's saying copy aliases. So there's a lot of aliases that I like to use on my Linux environments and I like using Ansible to copy them over to all my servers. So basically this is running the copy module and it's copying this bash underscore aliases file over to this directory. And I actually want to change this directory name. I'm going to say Brad. And then one thing I'm going to want to do is make sure that this source file actually exists. So I have a folder here named files. And if I go under there, I can see dot bash underscore aliases does exist. So it should be able to take this file and copy it over. So this looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and run this playbook and then verify if all our packages got installed. All right, so I'm ready to run my playbook. So I'm going to paste in a command here and it's just Ansible playbook and then my inventory file and then the playbook name. So let's hit enter and put in our pseudo password and it's going out. It's running the play for lab and it looks like it's going through it all. It's updating the app cache now. The app cache has been updated and now it is installing my packages. So I'm going to let this go ahead and I'll catch you on the tail end of it. All right, so my playbook is done running and it's giving me a status update of everything. So it, it's saying four things are already OK and then it made two changes. It looks like the two changes were it updated the app cache and then it copied that alias file. And then the four OKs come from our common packages installation. So there is four packages that I wanted to install and it looks like they were already installed on these machines. So it didn't need to do anything. So Ansible checked to make sure that those packages were installed. And since they already were installed, it didn't need to do anything. If any of those packages were missing, then Ansible would have caught that and it would have installed those packages and it would have marked it as a change. All right, so I think I'm going to end the video here. If you're interested in learning more about Ansible or you want to see the playbooks that I develop to deliver packages to my nodes, then go ahead and check out my other videos. I'll make sure to link to them. Anyways, thanks again for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.